welcome back for our second episode of Down in the Lounge. Today we are going to be talking about choosing the right trainer with Jay Manley. Jay, man, what can I say about Jay? First off, he's played for over 20 years of competitive soccer. He was a former men's physique competitor and he won the overall in men's C class. He's been training for over 10 years as an NCCPT certified personal trainer. He's currently an Olympic weightlifter and he is an assistant fitness manager and trainer at 24 Hour Fitness here in Keller, Texas. And you've heard us talk about him. He's a personal trainer for myself, my wife, my brother, Ben, Ben's oldest daughter. Jay, welcome to the show. Thanks, brother. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. This thank is you. the this is the guy that we've been talking about in other episodes that have been slaying us, make us throw up in our mouth and say bad words. And I don't know what you're talking about, no, uh, okay. listeners. They <laughs> fail, and uh, that's what happened. They fell. <laughs> <laughs> No, thanks for coming in, man. You know, when, thank you. We, thank um, you. when we sat down and we're talking originally about, you know, when we start bringing in people for interviews, you were at the very top of the list. You, I mean, like I told you, you've got to be you, hands down the best trainer I've ever worked with. And I've worked with quite a few, uh, myself included. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one I've worked with and I don't want to work with anymore. Oh, oh. Hug it out. Hug it out. <laughs> real quick, real quick. Air hug, bro. Hug. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I don't know if you've seen Weeds. We were watching that heart hug. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, uh, so what made you decide to choose a career in fitness? Uh, well, just, I mean, to be completely honest, I've always been some sort, in some sort of sport, some sort of activity where it requires of, uh, it's physically demanding if it's been a job or it's been the years of soccer. But it's, it's like a taboo situation. I literally, it was a Saturday afternoon. I didn't, have a game next, I, didn't have, I didn't have a game until Sunday. I was walking home from Chipotle. And I just, after I had that meal, I was like, man, something's not, something's not right. I'm missing something. I need a step. Do you have stomach problems from the Oh, no, burrito? man. Like, after, oh. I, after I ate it, because I, was, I, was, I remember I was walking down the back, one of the back streets coming to my apartment when I stayed in Tarzana, California. And I was literally walking home. And I was like, you know what? That was a great meal. You know what? I should eat more. I think that'll make me stronger. And it led from me getting stronger to I'm tired of being 140. I had played soccer for so long. I was 140 pounds, uh, maybe 146 What's soaking wet. Uh, five, nine and a half, okay. uh, just from the forehead. How but old were you then? When- then, pff, man, I may have been, let's see, I was, I think I was like 20. Okay. 20 years old. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make a change. And I didn't go. One of the things I struggled with is I didn't, I didn't have anybody that did physical fitness, that worked out or trained or anything like that. So I literally just, as I was steady walking, I had the idea. I said, you know what? Being an only child, if I'm going to go for something, I'm going to go for 120%. I didn't go to a gym to get a membership and just try it on my own. I didn't go to CrossFit because it wasn't hot at that time. I didn't go swimming because I can't swim. I, I literally just looked up, and I looked up personal trainers in my area. And that's the first thing I did. And I met this guy named Mike Clinn, and it's literally history from there. I trained with him. Ain't been the same since. When did you know that you wanted to follow personal training as a career path? Once, I think we trained, we were training twice a week. And the fact that he pushed me to a point that I would, I would, I only push myself in soccer. But he pushed me to a point that I was like, it's it's the example of what I use with you guys. I push you to a point to where you kind of, reconsider everything you've been doing to the point to where if this is what I want, I now have to change my whole mentality. Mm-hmm. And we were training one day, and ironically, we were training legs, and I'm like, okay, we're gonna train legs. And for some odd reason, he was like, you know what, your legs are good, you play soccer, let's do push-ups. And we literally did an hour and 20 minutes of varied push-ups, and at that point I was like, this is what I wanna do. I wanna be able to push somebody into something they're completely uncomfortable with, and see the look in their eyes and we're like, are you dead yet? And when they say yeah, I say, good. I got two more sets. So that's when the sadistic quality. Set. Yeah, that's, it, I mean it's been there, but you know. It's, so that's the look that we've given you. How many times? Yeah. I know that look. That's why when I see it, I'm just like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've heard you giggle several times <laughs> when I look at you that way. It's, it's, not, a, it's, a, it's not a loving look. Either. It's not. It's not. Yeah. But I do this because I love you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on the day of the week. <laughs> I have people who love me and they don't giggle like that. I'm just no. saying. And like, they don't love you enough. <laughs> This is where his infatuation with the movie It comes in. Oh, I did <laughs> tell you I wanted to see that movie. At you yeah. and giggling. <laughs> oh man. I'm gonna have balloons one day on your next workout. <laughs> All right, so 
that's been what a little over ten years now is when mm-hmm. you said you got certified, mm-hmm. and you moved to Texas how long ago? Um, let's see, I moved to Texas a couple times. This last time I moved, this last very last time I moved to Texas was in 2015. Okay, and to reevaluate that that statement I didn't get certified until almost a year and a half ago so the years I've been training has been completely research trial and error research trial and error research trial and error and it was private trainer yes okay I'll say because I know a lot of the corporate gyms they you know have their oh yeah Yeah. so So being a private trainer Mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of segue for a second being a private trainer and then going into the corporate gym world as a trainer what was that decision process like for you? Because I know a lot of times... Well, how was the change? Because I'm sure it's yeah. different. Yeah. Oof. It wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. I'm not. I'm the type of person where, unlike most people, they're like, oh, well, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to be. I don't want anybody to be a boss of me. I want to be my own boss. And that's good and all, but in the career path that you take, at some degree, you're not looking for a boss. You're looking for knowledge. You're looking for enlightenment. And so, for me to go from private training. You can only go so far if you don't try to expand on your knowledge. If you don't try to expand on, you know, at some point, I've only been doing this for X amount of time with just grit and hard work and ethics. There's somebody who's got a degree versus bachelor's, master's, doctor. There's somebody somewhere that can kind of help me educate myself even more. And I knew I was going to get that privately training. I was like, okay, well, let's do this. Let's go to a commercial gym. And in my interviews, I would literally... I would have interviews where instead of the the um, interviewer asking me questions about, well, how would you do this assessment? I would actually ask the person interviewing me. I'd say, hey, so if uh, what would you do if the person had this kind of compensation or this kind of injury or this kind of that? And I would wait and see what that person would say. And then based upon what that person told me or what that interviewer told me, I'm like, okay, I can work here. If not, it's all right. Obviously, you're not trying to elaborate anything I may have questions on. And it doesn't seem like you're you yourself are trying to further your education. I don't need to be here. I don't right, need to be it's anywhere. It's going to make it hard to it the environment for you to grow. It is. You're, I would say uh, we've known each other for a little over a year now. Let's uh, see what I got. I got to 24 uh, last year in March, and that's when I met. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So a little yeah, over a year. A little over a year. And we so That's when you were working there, right? Yeah. When, when you came and out. that was kind of the transition yeah. out because Jay got there. I left. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> there can only be one. He left. So, no, but. Um, We've been training now for, what, four months, three, four months, something like that? At least three. Yeah, I'll say four months. Something like that. Four months. And he was texting me last night. He was sending me over his bio, and I was, you know, typing it up for the show, so we had it ready to go. And I sent him back. I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, please don't take offense to this by any means, but I'm shocked that you don't have advanced certifications because your knowledge is yeah. immense. You know, I went through, I had my basic certification through Cooper. I had my advanced certification with biomechanics of resistance training. And I don't know anything compared to right. the knowledge that he's amassed. And so, um, and, to, and then to find that in a corporate gym, talk about, no pun intended, but it's it's a, a diamond in the rough. It's a little gem in a gym. Mm-hmm. You, you just don't really find that very often. And that's even hard to find even in just the, the private sector of, sure. right. you know, where they're, they're building their own clientele and stuff. Um, but I, I got to say, you know, I've been massively pleased and I can't give you enough kudos oh, for the sure. work that you've done with me and Thanks, my man. wife. You're killing my brother, but that's fun to watch. So. <laughs> death in the family is good for the soul. It's good for the soul. I, I can see what you're saying, though, about going to like 24 Hour Fitness because, all you know, all the trainers there, you guys kind of all have your special thing that mm-hmm. you can learn from each other. Cause, you know, my wife, Tracy, works with you as well. She's yeah. She's always picking all your brains because you've all got something different that, you know, it's just a bunch of knowledge feeding on top of knowledge. Yeah. You know, it's pretty good. So what, uh, out of all your certifications, which one is your uh, favorite? The fav- My favorite is the one I have because it, it got me in the door, which is my NCCPT. And um, other than that, man, that's, I, which is another reason why I truly find a drive in the being more knowledgeable, I actually my first test that I tried for that I attempted was a uh, NASM in the SCM, and it was before they changed it to make it even harder than what it is now. And I studied my butt off literally four to six hours a day, studying over and over and over, and I failed that test by two points. Oh, really? damn! Two points. Man. 
And it was, and, and at that point, it was, that's all I gave my attention to. I would work out, utilize what I worked out on, and apply it to my study. And then whoever I was dating at that time, you know, I would use, use them as a human anatomy chart. And I was studying over and to the point, so I was like, man, I got this. It was becoming, the terminology of training was second, was second nature. And I took the test, failed, two points. You know, I, I'm not going to go on this rabbit hole, but it just goes to show <laughs> that sometimes standardized <laughs> testing and stuff, the way they have it, doesn't mm-hmm. exactly ex- display no. knowledge the way, because our brains interpret things differently. Mm-hmm. And here we have a perfect example of that. Right. Um, all right, so you've been personal training a little over 10 years now. What would you say, other than giggling, is your favorite <laughs> part <laughs> about being a personal trainer? Watching, my, watching him suffer. Uh, <laughs> first of all, you showed up on time. Right. Not my fault. <laughs> yeah, um, that's true. My, honestly, and, and this is just, you know, being completely transparent because I do train both of you guys and your corresponding significant others and your kids and mm-hmm. your brother's your brother, not a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Although but, people thought he was. <laughs> yeah. They're like, hey, he looks, he looks pretty young. Yeah. <laughs> he does. Um, my favorite part of training is that, that aha moment or that moment when you – when you realize either one, this is completely new to you, where everything you were taught before, everything you knew before, is nothing compared to where you're gathering now. It's kind of like when you've been in, if you're going from a senior in high school to a senior in college, the, the, the preparation is different. You're preparing for college versus, yeah, all right, make sure you get your SAT scores uh, and together, your ACTs, make sure you got your, you know, your prep classes versus, preparation for senior year in college is, hey, where are we going to go work? Where are we trying to get a career? So it's it's looking in, look, watching you guys do a movement and the look on your eyes like, all right, I've never felt that before. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's do that again. That's usually within five minutes. Of, like, we, haven't <laughs> broken, two, two we haven't even broken the warm-up yet. <laughs> or less. It's, that, uh, it's that eye-catching moment where either, like I said, one where you're like, okay, I like the way this feels because I've never felt it before. And you get that, I, I want to feel more of this. And making your making your extraordinary normal. He has, he has to get his jollies off 30 times a session with me because I'm doing that oh, at yeah. least 25, 30 times. <laughs> like, ah. Well, this goes back to what we were talking about before. You know, uh, when we talked about training with you, our workouts by ourselves or ever since then have never been the same. Mm-mm. Not, not, even, not even close. Yep. I walk in there and I want to work out by myself. Now I'm like... Man, I didn't really do crap. Like, it's not compared to what I did with you. But, yeah, but it makes you it makes you drive more once you once you've had like a, a harder push. Your wife's the same way. Oh yeah, she doesn't like she doing says legs. The same thing. Yeah. yeah, she doesn't like doing legs unless you know I train her with legs. It's like all I did was just exp- was just show you how much more you can push. Now right. technically you shouldn't you shouldn't regress. You should push forward, keep pushing. If you don't feel yeah. like you felt when we trained, you may not have trained hard enough. It, it uh, may be my I personality. Don't know type. If I like the way you say that. <laughs> Next time I train with you. Hey, you're not skipping out on the 10 by 50 leg press. Don't even think you are. Oh, crap. So, um, Fun times. <laughs> no, I don't know if it's just my personality type, but I've gotten to a point legitimately where I'm trying to remember what we did on the last session the next time I hit those muscles by myself. Yeah. And if I right. can't remember exactly how we did it, I'm like, oh, oh, I'm frustrated because I'm like, I'm not going to get a burn like I got on that one. I was, you know, I was doing it yep. today. I was mixing a few things up. So... I've never had a trainer look at me and go, what were you thinking? You don't do that unless I'm there because I'm so dedicated to try and mimic what he's taught me. Right. Oh, yeah. So so for our listeners out there and that are wanting to get into to fitness or they've just started, what what's some benefits that might that they might get from getting a personal trainer? There's a quite a, there's a quite a few benefits. Some or some are a little bit more different than or out the box than others besides Getting someone who's going to motivate you, who's going to hold you accountable, you know, somebody who's going to diversify your workouts. I mean, honestly, you can look on YouTube and get somebody to motivate you. You can get, mm-hmm. I mean, and at the end of the day, if you're not truly motivated, I mean, we can ex- we can attest to this, all three of us in the room. There's been some times we're not motivated, especially getting ready for a show. Right. But it's a gift. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I was listening to Bo's interview, and instead of him saying, I got to go work out, we get to work out. Like, so if you able to get, if you're able to do something willingly as a, as a, like a prize or a gift, you know, go do it. And in terms of what people, you know, if you want a trainer, you want a trainer. If you're looking to humble yourself and actually learn, benefit of getting a trainer. If you're looking to get a push, 
better fit in getting a trainer. If you're looking to transform not just how your body works, how your body moves, but the understanding of your body, get a trainer. If you don't know what to eat, get a trainer. If, you're, if you are on 120% efficiency on your eating, your workouts, your definition, you are dialed in and you want more, get a trainer. So let me put two scenarios in front of you. I've got two people. Okay? Got it. Let's say one of our audience members, you know, audience member A, they've never done fitness, but they've been listening to the podcast and this has kind of inspired them that they want to start. Yeah. Audience member B has been doing it for a year. So they're a year into their, their progress mm-hmm. or their journey. And let's say both of them decide, you know what, I should get a trainer. If you were to compare audience member A to audience member B, would you say that audience member A would achieve their goals faster by using a trainer from the start, or do you feel like they need to kind of get their body moving first, go into the gym, learn the machine, swim, and then implement a trainer? Honestly, just my opinion, I would recommend getting it started from the very beginning. I, I, the, way I, the way I was raised and where I was taught is you want to be proactive instead of reactive because most people don't know their body. So at the end of the day, if say for example, I want to get a trainer, but and this, people tell me this all the time, and I've heard it said to either my other trainer client, trainer coworkers, oh, I want to get a trainer, but I'll come to you when I'm ready. And it's not financially ready; they're just they're they're ready. It's, and I tell them, I tell every single person the same thing: you're never ready for a trainer, because if you were ready for a trainer, you wouldn't need a trainer. You right. wouldn't need a trainer. If you, it, it's just like our athletes. It, the athletes that, that compete at you know the top level, they still have trainers. They still have people to keep them not only at that top level, but to push them getting ready for next season. The person who's coming in fresh, I would want to get on them ASAP. How many people have you seen learn something the first time and learn it the wrong way? And it develops a habit for the rest of the... Put your hands down, guys. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> sorry. And they develop that habit, and it's... you. you you don't tell them, no one's told them that they're wrong, but that's the kind of downside of fitness. If you tell someone, that, hey, eating 1,200 calories and barely, barely working out, just doing a bunch of cardio, you're going to strip your body fat down and have more lean muscle than you ever have before, and you keep spreading that, you keep spreading that, you keep spreading that, eventually that's all people are going to think, and that's what they're going to be engineered and programmed in their mind to do. And at the end of the day, you got to sit down and say, hey, okay, what do you know about your body? What do you know about your results? What do you know about your goals? And they tell you, and it's like, okay, well, I admire the fact that, you know, you have always positive feedback. I admire the fact that you've, you've gotten this far off what you know. Here's what I know about the body. Not making anyone, not belittling anybody, not telling them, hey, you're dumb, you're stupid. That's, that's the most idiotic thing I've ever heard. But it's just letting them know, hey, this is how your body works based upon what you're trying to do, this is my recommendation. Well, and you've been doing this pretty much nonstop. Not, I'm not gonna say 24 seven, but pretty much. I mean, this has been your life for well over a decade yeah. and it's taken you that long to get where you're at. You're st- you still have plenty of years ahead of you. And so to expect someone who's got a full-time job, raising a family, mm-hmm. And they, they're in the gym, even if they're in the gym an hour a day, seven days a week, that's not the comparison of 10, 12 hours of contemplating, working it, right. trying something, failing, trying it again, succeeding, going through all that to amass the level of knowledge that you have. And so it's kind of like hitching your your skateboard to the back of a, a school bus to get where you're going. Oh, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's piggybacking a lot of time. I will attest, I've been in fitness in some way, form, or fashion since I've been... 14, freshman in high school football, doing powerlifting. So I guess when you look at it from the beginning, even though I took a few years off, almost 20 years, Ben's been doing it for over 20 years, Mm -hmm. and just going to out myself on air, (laughs) we decided that we're going to start working on chess last week. You had a full plan laid out for me. We did the first set, and he goes, oh, we can't even do this. we we got to digress even farther back into the basics because I just wasn't firing off the way I wanted to. Hey, guess what? I just figured out why I'm not seeing gains where I want to see. <laughs> and I was going to say I agree 100% with, with what you said as far as if you're getting into it, 
you know, get a trainer if you can. Because mm-hmm. I wish I would have done yeah, that. Yeah, I would say years the ago. only obstacle needs to be financial. Exactly. That needs to be the right. only justifiable reason. Nothing True. else. Yeah. Mentally, physically, they, like all of that is, in my opinion, their excuses. Yeah, I wish I would have done that 20 years ago because when I first started working out with you, I mean, there was all kinds of stuff I wasn't doing right. Uh, well, he, wasn't, okay. he, wasn't, he wasn't in it's it 20 okay. years ago. He might not have helped you out 20 years ago. I, know, I keep aging myself when we talk. But. We won't tell nobody. We won't tell yeah. You're still 31 no, to me. Still uh, 31. Yeah. But yeah. the good news is, is we're not going to go another 20 years. No, no. no knows, absolutely not. Spinning our no. wheels. You know, and, and to your point, you mentioned that you know there's a lot of, you know, especially we've talked about how there's so much information and the, the blessing and curse of social media is that mm-hmm. you can share things, you can learn things, but if it's not shared and implemented properly, it can be right. detrimental. So you see a lot of times where people will go on and say, well, let's say I'm a beginner and I want to go research a workout routine. In fact, I have a friend of mine who reached out to me. She wanted a little bit of advice. I think I was sharing with that with you a while back. I might yeah, have yeah. mentioned on, on one of our right. first couple yep. episodes. Um, and she wanted to know what to do. And so luckily she had me to kind of guide her through that. But she's the type of person that she would jump online because she's a research freak. She'd uh, jump online and she'd start researching. Well, fine, perfect. If all she got was the written, you need to do lat pull downs and this and that. She's not even going to know necessarily what that is if she doesn't know what the muscles of the body are. Right. Well, then you take it to the next step. Maybe you see someone on Instagram who recorded their workout routine mm-hmm. oh, that and then they time. write it down. And even let's say it's basic, good information it's not these you know using the machines wrong just because it looks cool stuff let's say it's good stuff but there's no description to it yeah do you know and i found i was actually speaking with a, 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 an instagram lady the other day and she did a phenomenal job of exactly what you would say make sure you do this roll this back tighten this down this and she, she, was broke, she broke it down yeah. yeah but even then you don't have someone there standing and saying this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. This muscle activate here. I mean, he was doing that yeah, yesterday with me, touching and making the adjustments. exactly, and it helps you to cue right. mentally those muscles. So there's a progression, but the nice thing is, is you can truncate that entire table. And I think I sit with you. If I would have known this mm-hmm. and I was financially in a place to do it ten years ago, I hands down would have done it. And I would, you know, but of course hindsight's twenty twenty. Right. You know, I'm just glad I get to see in five years something that I probably wouldn't have gotten to see had I not yeah, me too. connected or just even really my biggest barrier was the whole corporate trainer. That was my, oh, I had true. a thing that, oh, it, you know, and I, he blew that out of the water. You know, I learned something new. <laughs> that's, that's the common, that's the, uh, that's like the negative connotation to box gyms. Like when you hear a car salesman, you think, oh, my dude's going to try to sell me something. I mean, but you're honestly there for a car. So if you're not there for a car and him to sell it to you, then are you there same thing in the gym you know when you go to a gym and you're looking for a trainer you want somebody who one is knowledgeable but and here's the kicker it doesn't matter how smart you are it doesn't matter how knowledgeable you are if you can apply that and it's not dumbing it down but if you can apply that or articulate that to your clients in a way they can that they can understand it it doesn't mean you smaller words but it means like you may have to get somebody who doesn't like doing cardio to do cardio how well, you mix up the heart rate. You 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 do a movement this where they're like, oh man, I'm tired. And he's like, oh yeah, hey, so this is kind of like doing cardio, right? No, this is not cardio because cardio is treadmill. Yeah. Mm, but technically, if you get your heart rate in a nice little heart rate zone, it's kind of like doing cardio. And then they got that look in their face like, oh, so I can do this instead of cardio? Technically, you can right. if the intentions are correct. But you, it it comes with, you know, who you're looking for as a trainer. I mean, not to go backwards in time but if you're looking if if it comes down to the point to where you're looking for a trainer you're looking to do something different or looking to do something better you gotta you gotta mesh well with that trainer it's gotta be somebody who who can you know take a joke if you say a joke and it regardless on if it's you know inappropriate or appropriate that person should be able to tell you one hey let's get focused back on our workout or two laugh with you if this if this person can't you know be 120 percent with you, the person that you're spending money on, investing your time with, trusting this person to get you to you want where you want to be physically, because a lot of my clients, it's not just training them physically. I'm also training them mentally as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys know that because you know there's workouts you're ther- where you're a therapist. Right? Yeah, there, there's <laughs> workouts where we're talking and I'm and we're doing a, a passive movement, but at, I'm, my main focus is where's your head at right now? Like right. where's your where are you? Or number two is you need that emotional release. Like sometimes 
what I do with the women, I have boxing gloves. I teach them boxing drill one because the world's crazy as cuss right now. But also number two, you know, the best way to relieve stress is to let it out like physically, not just verbally, because you don't want to go around cussing at anybody, but you want to be able to hit a mitt, hit the, hit the body or exert force. It makes you feel better. But you have to know how to communicate with your clients. And if you can't communicate with your client or vice versa with your trainer, and you know that, that may not be the person for you. I'd say one thing I've learned that I would add to that is work with a trainer who's excited to work with you. Oh, yeah. The very, the, when I told you uh, that my very first time going to get a trainer and I asked him, you know, hey, you know, I want to look like this, but, you know, should I do CrossFit or should I do something different? And he's like, no, you should, you know, train this. Don't do CrossFit because you're not going to get the physique you're looking for. Right. Well, when I went in for my first session, he goes, all right, here's here's so-and-so. You're going to be working. He's going to be training with him. I was like, Oh, I thought I was training with you because I kind of want—I kind of wanted to look like oh, you. Seriously, that, that changes your mindset right off oh, the bat. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. So I was like, oh, you know, thanks. You know, not sure how I felt about that. Not entirely sure why it happened to begin with, but it just did. Um, so when when I approached you, I said, you know, I want to train. I actually came up to you—I don't know, five or six times. So when I finally was actually ready to pull the trigger, I thought you was gonna be like, oh, here he comes again. So he wants to train. No. You know, but <laughs> but you never you know you never gave up the you know enthusiasm back to me that hey whenever you're ready I'm ready and then this the type of training too not every trainer is going to be good with all types of clients or methods of training right True. you know if you if you want to do you know like marathon running you're probably not going to work with a trainer whose sole focus and understanding has been muscle growth or body it doesn't understand yeah. anything else um, so that's that was my big thing that I did learn over the years is find someone who understands exactly mm -hmm. what I'm looking to do ideally if possible who has already done it because mm -hmm. you want them to have at least an empathy of what your body's going through because they've experienced it themselves yeah, that's so, what I like about 24-hour fitness we're over there at Keller is like all you guys kind of specialize in something different mm -hmm. you know it's, it's pretty unique it's a well-rounded staff over Very. there where you can you can pretty much find yep. one person at least who can cover what you got yep exactly so all right so what advice can you give our listeners as it pertains to picking the the best trainer for them the first time what would you say is like, let's say the number one component that if you were going to walk in, sit down and say, this is what you need to look for in your, in your first trainer, and this is going to give you your best chance of success for landing it the first time, what advice would that be? First things first, communication. Um, at 24, when we look at our schedule and we have somebody who's like who's a fit appointment or somebody that we have, uh, we've never met, your job and your obligation, which I say everyone, everyone, actually, yeah, everyone does a good job at it, is reaching out to that client. Because the one thing you want to have is if somebody's coming in to meet with you, has never met you before, don't know you from Adam, don't know, barely knows your physique, they just know you by name. And I mean, if anybody's known, seen my name, I go by Jay for a reason. But if they haven't met you, you want to establish a good communication. Because what if you end up signing, what if you end up training with this person and they didn't establish a good communication from the beginning? That should be a red flag that, hey, this person's not going to communicate with me if I have a question. He's not going to communicate with me in our workouts. He won't communicate with me in terms of my progression, what I really need to work on. Am I doing well with this? Do I need to work on this? Is he going to communicate with me on how well my nutrition is going? Is he, going to, he or she going to communicate with me as far as our progression, if they'll show up? Like, you need to have that communication with your trainer. One, because in some small degree, we are, you know, therapists in some degree. So you need to be able to communicate with this person to the point where you guys have been training for one month, two months, three weeks, your first session. If you're not having a great day, but your trainer's been communicating with you, seeing where your mind is at, seeing how you feel for the day, building that anticipation, building that excitement, and you come in, and let's just say your car died on the way there. They're used to you and that, and that energy coming in, and then when you come in, they're able to now sympathize and empathize with you. Hey, man, are you excited for today? Yeah, so and so with my car. Okay, cool. Everything good. Anything I can do? Get everything really established. Get that off the plate, and then keep pushing. If you can communicate that with somebody you've just met, that you're willing to have them see you in your worst scenario, which is you dying, sweating on the ground, not sure if you can go one more rep, then that's the person you want to be with. But if you can't communicate with that person, I mean, all three of us are married. 
your communication goes a long way. If you can't mm-hmm. communicate with your spouse, it sucks to suck. And comprehension. Of that oh, yes. That's, I've learned that's the biggest thing. Yep. It's one thing to communicate, but if it's not received, comprehended. Oh, yeah. One ear, one in one ear, not the other. Yep. So communication would be one. Uh, and also number two, I won't say the physicalities of a trainer because I know some trainers who may not be in the best shape, but are knowledgeable and at least can kind of be that live through you type of person. There are some trainers that, that aren't in the best shape, but when you see them from, from visual, it's, oh, that trainer's not in good shape. I don't want to be my trainer. But do you realize that trainer used to be top this, top that, top this, all American this, and, and doing all those great things, dislocated his knee, broke his hip, threw his shoulder out of spot, or had an insignificant car accident to where now they can't train like they used to to have that look to get your attention to want to train with them. Or there's always a possibility they may just not want to look necessarily. Exactly. Want to look. That's well, not gonna, their personal yeah. goals, but that doesn't mean they're not equipped with the right exactly. information to get you. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm really glad you brought that up because, you know, that perception's out there. Mm-hmm. For a brand new person in the gym or someone that's been doing it for 20 years, if they see a trainer out of shape or might look a little overweight because of whatever, they automatically think that, okay, well, I don't want that guy because the way he looks. Because yeah. they're based on, you know, they're looking at looks, mm-hmm. you know. And well, that's not the case, just like that's not. Well, and for, for example, I think one of the big reasons that when I, when I approached you about doing this podcast, one of my driving forces in the back of my mind was there is this stigma of I want to find someone that I want to look like, and right. I'm going to go up to them, I'm going to have them train me. And if that person's never done it, but they're willing to take your money, right? right? And that happens all the time. Someone, yeah, someone yeah. wins a competition... They don't have any certifications. The only knowledge they have is kind of what they've absorbed. Well, you're and really you're kind of the you're the outlying exception to the rule. But normally, if you haven't gotten some sort of formal education in the area, you pose more of a threat than you do a benefit. Mm-hmm. Your dedication to gaining knowledge over time is what made that exception, as opposed to hey, I look good, you know. Yeah. I mean, we've we. I'm sure you've had. I know I've had people come up and ask, "Will you train me?" And I've even though I've had formal training in the past and, and certifications, I knew that I'm not up to par for them. I'm like, no, that part of it was I don't have the desire to because yeah. I just I don't get creative the way he does with his stuff. I don't know many people that do. Um, but it'd be very easy to have people come up and just I and mean, I know a lot of personal trainers that do. They 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 start looking good. They have a lot of people come up and ask. Then they go get certified. The dangerous ones are the ones that necessarily don't get certified. They build clientele mm-hmm. base. Mm-hmm. They have no idea what they're training and telling people. And they might get some immediate results, but the long-term damage is far greater. And I've already shared oh, yeah, a few sure. stories about yeah, that did. in the past that I've ran across. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, that's I think that's one of my biggest fears for our listeners is it, I don't want them to fall into that trap of just finding someone that looks like they want to. Do your do your research. Yeah. Vet them. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, ask the right questions. You know, know what you're looking for. And I promise you'll you'll have a better chance of getting there. Oh yeah. So for the majority of your clients now, uh, what is the number one area that you find something they can improve on that they don't use in their workout workout programs? Mentality. Yeah. It's it's. I mean, I I I've gotten I've been blessed with a pretty good success of my clients getting to their goals physically, getting to their goals as far as getting stronger, getting faster, jumping higher, increasing more flexibility, but. One of my one of my things is, I mean, I've trained with you guys all the time. What's the first thing I ask you when you come in? How do you feel? How do you feel today? Because I mean, talk, you we've talked about that before. <laughs> <laughs> we've had to learn how to modify our answers. You know, I've, I, yeah, I and I've, I've noticed. It really <laughs> we're going to ramp it up. <laughs> it really depends on how he asks. If he comes over with a bit, how you feeling but, today? Versus he's like he's been burning the, the candle at both ends. He he jumped out of session. He's trying. How you feeling today? That will determine how we respond. Oh, yeah. well, that's all, that's all in the telling, book, guys. Actually, one episode we talked about that, how you <laughs> ask how we feel. And, and I've learned that when I say I feel good, you seem to ramp it up. But if I say I feel like crap, I say it on purpose, you mm-hmm. still ramp it up. So oh, it doesn't yeah. matter what I no, say. You know? it really does. I just to make sure your mind is right. Yeah. Because like it goes to your question you guys ask me, is the mentality. If you're – and we see this in bodybuilding all the time, man. You can get bigger. You can get more vascular. You can get more uh, striations. You can just have the – the best body in the world, but you can also have a form of disease where you still see yourself as a built-in. Mm-hmm. You can be, I mean, 
There's a couple guys. That's usually what drives people, quite honestly. That right, is it what does. drives them to get to yeah. that point, but they never get. They never arrive. You're, ne- you're never satisfied. You're never satisfied. You're never satisfied. You and your mentality is, and I think Bo touched on this uh, in his classes. What, at, at some degree, is it? You have to shift off. You, you have a beginning goal, and your beginning goal can be, I want to lose weight. And then once you start seeing weight drop, and you start seeing things in your body change, it's like, okay, I'm kind of cool with the weight. Now I really want to focus on building the strength in my core. I want to start building the definition in my legs. And the one thing I make sure everybody is good is that really pays attention to me is is mentally. Because if you're not mentally prepared or at least understanding of where your mind is at, it's just like someone who is depressed. The most dangerous person that's depressed is the person who doesn't realize they're depressed. If someone comes in and it's like, oh, yeah, I'm good, I'm good, and I can tell you're not and you're fighting back that you're not good, after about three movements, that's going to really show. Yeah. And I'm not going to put anybody's wife on the spot. But there are some times where I train certain individuals and, all right, I'm good. That workout gets ramping. Those endorphins get going. Those emotions keep, keep going. And I'm pushing you to be better than I know you can. And you want to be better. But all of a sudden, everything that you've been, like, harboring or everything you've been holding back, it all flushes forward. And now you're, you're letting it out in the middle of a workout. I actually like that because now it's like, okay, good. You good? Yeah. All right, let's get to work. Now can, now we can really get to work. Mentally, I want to make sure that you are prepared for pushing your body to a point to where it's going to require you to dig a little deeper. If you're not ready for that, then let's get a couple minutes of cardio in. Let's go through some stretches. Let's talk. Once you get that going, let's keep moving. You know, I, I love how you ha- hammered that as the, the number one piece. Because this podcast is about fitness, health, wellness, and mindset. Yes. And I don't put mindset at the last because it's the least. It just flows better in the way that we say right. it on our tongue. But That's mindset is hands huge. down the first thing. Because if you're not a... First off, if you don't want to do it, guess what? You're not going to do it. Oh, yeah. Let's say you want to do it, but you're not mentally there. Well, now you're either going to not go, or maybe you do go, and it's it's a half workout or a quarter workout. And then it goes injuries. And that happens to all of us. Oh, yeah. There's no one... Who hits every single workout with 100% intensity every single time. They're enthusiastic. Nobody does right. that because we're humans. Life happens. Mm-hmm. But a truism is that if you want to see the maximum results, if you want to optimize your time, you need to be in that mindset. If So if that means, assuming you have flexibility in your schedule, if that means you need to wait 30 minutes till you get your mind right before you show up, then get your mind right before you show up. Take mm-hmm. the extra time if that's what it, ha- if that's what it takes. Right. Because... In, so, in some very complex movements um, that I've done in the past, <laughs> if your mind's not there and you're not fully focused, engaged, you oh, yeah. can hurt yourself bad. With the uh, band. <laughs> with the band. <laughs> so, and not the kind that makes music. <laughs> so, all right. So for those of our listeners who are struggling to put on lean muscle, all right, and I think this is probably a goal for a vast majority men and women for sure you know even if it's not a whole lot but some quality lean muscle what do you find to be the number one obstacle that if they were to remove it or improve in that particular area they would begin to see momentum again preparation and knowledge and i'll hit preparation first because it's the easier one um if you're wanting to build more lean well i'll hit knowledge first because it's easier do you know how to point blank Oh, well, I'll lift heavier with lower reps. Is that really what it takes to build lean muscle? Okay, well, I want to build more lean muscle, so I'll do lighter weight and more reps. Okay, how does that benefit you? You want to, learn, you want to actually know and learn what it takes to build lean muscle or how to show lean muscle, how to develop, how to mature lean muscle. So that, that comes with the knowledge aspect. If you don't know, like I said earlier, get you a trainer or at least sit with somebody who can at least have the uh, – have the uh, the drive to want to talk to you about it. I mean, before I trained with you and even before you and even if Saj is listening, I'm the same thing with Saj. There's been many times where you guys have come to me with questions or I'm tight here. Man, I don't talk to you guys about buying training until, like, you come to me with it. Other than that, it's all about having the intensity to want to share that knowledge. And you have to have knowledge in order to progress your body. There's over 600 muscle groups in the body. Just muscle groups. How many of those do you actually know? Now, I'm not talking about the major ones like quads and hamstrings. What does the quad break down into? What are the four muscle groups that break up the quad? What are the three muscle groups that break up the hamstring? How many parts of your glutes do you have? 
So when you start knowing more about your body, mm -hmm. <laughs> right butt. <laughs> I call him left cheek and right cheek. Yeah. Uh, especially for women, they want to grow their butt, but all they see is squats, which goes back to Instagram. It tells you to do kickdowns. What does that work? Oh, well, I've seen it on it. Okay, well, you got to learn what your body does, especially if you have compensations where you can't do a proper squat. Okay, now you're going to develop more of a back issue and knee issue than a nice butt. And then preparation, when you train these muscles, are you feeding them like you're supposed to? Are you hydrating your body like you're supposed to? That's I, another question I, you ask I, all the time. Did you get enough water? Have you eaten today? Have you? Like, that's yeah. one of yep. the first questions. Because you can be mentally there. I'll, I'll just I'll check things off. That's a weird thing. You can be mentally there, but you're so driven, and I've had this many times. I'm so driven to work out. I'm like, yes, I'm going to hit this. I'm going to hit that. My body's feeling good. And then you get halfway through your work. I was like, man, why am I so exasperated? What's going on? Oh, I didn't eat as much. Hmm. You're not fueled. You're not fueled. You're mentally fueled. Like, you're in it. You're like, nothing hurts, especially as you get older. Nothing hurts that morning. You're, you're good. And then you get to the I gym. I felt that. Man, I'm still trying to rub my knees out. Um, and then you get to the workout, and you're like, your B is like, but I, I'm ready. I'm ready. Nothing hurts. I warmed up. What's going on? Did you prepare your body for the macro and micronutrients to give your body what it needs? I talk about frustration when you're mentally there and then your body doesn't show oh, up because of that. <laughs> you're like, wait, what's going on? Yeah, that's a mental beat down. Yeah, that messes your mind big time. It's the funniest thing to see somebody argue within themselves. <laughs> so <laughs> the eyes flash left. Yeah. Like there's a, there's a fight over there. <laughs> so same question, but in regards to losing body fat. So, if you're looking to lose body fat and you're struggling, I'm not going to use the same two as far as knowledge, but it is preparation, though. You do have to prepare yourself and your body to to lose, to lower that body fat. Does it, do you know the difference? And I was like, yes, I use the same two, Comp, you know, preparation and knowledge. You know, the difference between body fat, body fat loss and weight loss. I say about seventy. What's today? Friday. Okay, eighty-five percent of people who work out know the difference between fat loss and body fat loss. Do you know the difference? Oh, I just want to lower my body fat. Okay, what's your body fat? I don't know, but I know I'm at this weight and I want to drop down. Okay, well, if you actually lower your body fat, you may drop about five pounds. You'd be more dense, so then you see more lean muscle. But when it comes to somebody wanting to lose body fat, did you prepare yourself to lower your body fat? Does that mean now, yes, you have to focus on how much cardio you're doing. You have to focus on what you're actually lifting and why you're lifting. Okay, what's your rep range? What's your, what's your set count? What's your, you know, one, where's your mind frame? Are you coming in thinking this is going to get me a step closer to lowering my body fat? This is going to help me lower my body fat. Or are you coming in like, all right, well, I'm just going to do this, this, and this because I saw it and they got low body fat. But like, what, what, what did you prepare? Did you eat enough food to have that workout? Are you going to eat after you work out? Like, what, what is your preparation? What is your goal this week? What is your goal next week? Are you aware that how long it takes to burn one pound of fat? Do you know how long it takes to sufficiently lower your body fat if we're going off a time scale? Like, are you prepared for this transition? People want things right here, right now, but they're not prepared to go through the journey or prepared for the good or the bad. You can do everything you want, but I said both said this on the last podcast. You go six months working your ass off, working your butt off, and you don't get any results, you're going to be heated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't prepare, who are you mad at? In my experience, the number one mental mistake that people make when they're approaching a body fat loss goal is not eating enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're so, and, and so they have, the, again, it's it's half the information. Mm -hmm. They understand the calorie piece, and if I burn more than I consume, I'll burn fat, but they, they don't understand that too much of a deficit mm -hmm. actually restructures your body's metabolism yep. and, and that you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. Mm -hmm. And more than likely, yes, you may lose that body fat, but the moment you actually start eating anything a decent amount, you're going to pull an Oprah yep. and you're going to slingshot right back to where <laughs> you right. were or even worse. That's right. Um, and especially if you if you deprive yourself, yep. because when you start n not depriving yourself, that becomes almost a whole new addiction because mm -hmm. that just, you just start shoveling mm -hmm. everything in and it's almost uncontrollable and you, you're like, well, I don't understand because your body was in so much of a state of hunger that it's telling you 
feed me. So I heard that uh, yesterday. You, <laughs> oh, my buddy was telling me that yesterday. Man. Oh yeah, because you, you had to. You ate good though. You huh? ate good afterwards. Oh, I ate real good. I bet you did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> angry Ben. I was. Uh, yeah, yeah. So angry. You should have saw his face in that workout. It was gnarly. <laughs> no one talked to me yesterday. That's, that's good. Uh, or should, the day before. You should do that more angry. often. Just walk around with a hangry face. Yeah, I should. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I know we have a few listeners who have already mentioned to me that they've considered careers in, uh, as personal trainers. So what advice can you give them so that they can shorten their learning curve in regards to client acquisition and retention? Never stop learning. And a, in a career path, or say, for example, being a personal trainer, being a physical therapist, you know, this, you know, you guys, you guys differ, or my seniors about a couple years, I think Nick, me and you are, what, a couple years apart? I'm 33 at this point. Yeah, I'll be 31, so yeah, we're about a couple years. Nick, Nick, um, Ben is our senior, but there's things that you did when you were training that has completely turned upside down than what we were doing when we are training now. Yeah. So, to me, if you're, if, if you're looking to become a trainer, you're looking to generate your clientele, you gotta always be learning. Always be learning. Never, and I really use this word, but never feel like you know enough because you don't know enough. As long as you're, as long as there's still new information coming out about how to cure diseases, how to get more range of motion, how to get stronger, how to build more lean muscle, how to increase your range of motion or how to enlighten yourself, you have to always be learning. And whilst you're learning, show people that you're learning something. Say, hey, you know what? Um, I just, I just, I just found out about this new movement, and we've progressed your body to do this movement. Let's try it out. Show others that you are willing to sit at home instead of going out drinking, instead of going out parties, instead of binging on Netflix, that you are willing and completely okay to sit at home, either go through YouTube, go through the internet, open up books, buy books offline, and sit there and say, you know what? I want to research some more. I heard somewhere, and I don't know how accurate this is, but it seems pretty accurate to me. So I'm not, you know, I'm going to make a disclaimer that I'm not saying this is necessarily <laughs> true, but that in all the areas of science, that one of the younger areas of research is actually the human body. Mm-hmm. We've been studying the stars for hundreds, if not thousands, of years, right? But a true understanding, a deep understanding of the human body, the cells, how it works, that's, I mean, that's new when you think about the the span of the human race. Exactly. It's roughly the last 100, 150 years, and it's it's gotten exponentially deeper as time has gone on. And so things that we used to think were accurate, new research comes in and says, well, that's not entirely true, or we only had part of the information. And so if you're going off of, as you mentioned, outdated information, mm-hmm. either you could, be, if it's completely wrong, you could be hurting or harming someone. True. If it's not completely wrong and it's a half truth, you're, you're definitely not maximizing the benefit to them, exactly. you know, and potentially yourself mm-hmm. uh, as a trainer. So a follow-up question to that is, do you have any avoid this at all costs advice for, uh, for our listeners who want to get certified? Oh, that's a tough one. You get what you pay for. I'll just drop the mic there. You get what you pay for. You want a nice car, but you only bought it for five hundred dollars. That's what you're gonna get. You want a you want a house, and it only costs you fifty grand. That's what you're gonna get. You want to start helping people to be better within themselves, increasing their mobility, increasing their mind frame of life, increasing their strength and want to continue doing it, make sure you invest in something that you're going to see a return. There's a couple certifications that range from 150 bucks to 200 bucks, and then you have, you know, not to knock on anybody, but there's a couple certifications that run you a couple hundred, past 700. But you think about the information, like my NASM certification, <clears throat> still paying off on that. But that's not the point. <laughs> but you think about the you think about the knowledge I obtained from that NASA that made my next certification a breeze. Like that information I obtained before I even got certified was from failing a test, not passing it. I failed a test and cheat and obtained so much information. And when I passed, I was like, okay, I can get down with this. 
But to answer your question, it, it, it you get what you pay for. And to piggyback, it also goes to the other question you asked, you asked prior, that if you are getting a certification to get into the door, follow that door with the place that's trying to teach you more. If you get a $10 certification, Walmart selling them for $10 right off the shelf. Okay, good. Make sure you go to a, a gym or a, a club or a privately owned place that's willing to give you $1,000 worth of information. Well, if you're only paying ten bucks, you better at least be going there because you're not going to get much else after that. Facts. <laughs> you Facts. better buy five or six of them. Yeah. You know, one thing all, I didn't all the same ones. <laughs> <laughs> Double down stacks. Yeah. Yeah. One thing when I was getting my certification through Cooper, um, the, all their advanced certifications was actually handled over at the Telos Gym down in downtown Dallas, which mm -hmm. used to be the Dallas Performance Center, and. The owner, the owner of the gym, his name was Everett Auberg, and what's funny is his story is very much one of those where he was a bodybuilder, and his first client came up and was like, dude, can you make me big like you? And so he kind of got into doing personal training as a career because of that one client, but then he mm -hmm. went on to become probably one of the, the, at least in the United States, one of the most knowledgeable and renowned trainers. I know that, like specifically at Telos, like he, uh, when I was doing this ten years ago, I don't know what his schedule's like now, but he was booked out six months in advance. Oh, nice! Forty hours a week at two hundred bucks an hour. Jeez. Ran the gym, and sat on the board of there's a board of twelve. Eleven of them are doctors. Oh, and wow! Then him that pick and choose annually which personal training certifications meet the national requirements. Oh, so nice. you talk about a level of experience and knowledge to mm -hmm. sit on that as one, and he's the only one who's not a PhD. That was, you know, incredible. Um, so, and, and those certifications weren't cheap back then either for me. And I can't, I can't imagine what they are now. It was 10, no, 13 years ago. That was back before the crash. So I don't even know what they'd cost now. Right. But, you know, the the level of dedication that it requires to get on over there, you need a four year degree plus your certification, mm -hmm. you know, so on and so forth. But all of their trainers, you know you're getting something of quality and, and they cost, but again, goes to the old adage, you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for with a trainer, and I would say don't raise my rates, but you're a bargain. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and spike that up. <laughs> Legitimately, I mean, because I've paid the gamut. I, I think part of the reason, going back to when I said I got handed off, mm -hmm. my first trainer, is because the trainer I got handed off to was 200 bucks a month. I could go in as often as I want, and he would just give me a cookie cutter workout. Uh, and I got results, okay. but I didn't get the per – it wasn't the personal, personal. training. Right. It, you know, it was but, just training. But it's what I could afford at the time. So right. I think that was probably a big driver in it. Um and it suited its purpose at the time, but right. I definitely, in comparison, nowhere close. Yeah. I was basically paying for a workout plan, changing for me daily every time, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. So, um, well, Jay, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you coming into the studio it's been awesome. and Thanks, recording guys. with us. This this has been something <laughs> I've been looking forward to mm -hmm. since I since I sat down with Ben. I was like, we've got to we got to do this podcast, and you know what? When we do the interviews, Jay's got to be one of the first ones yeah. we get on. So hopefully you'll be willing to come back and do some more. I know we want to do some deep dives later on into some more. Some more details. Yeah, details. some specifics that our, our oh, yeah. audience can take and start implementing into the gym themselves. Okay. So I'm down with that. Well, everyone, I really appreciate y'all checking in with us, and we hope that this has been beneficial. If you have any questions for Jay, um, you can shoot them over to our email at podcast at thefitnesslounge.net. We'll make sure we get them over to him and get them answered and sent right back to you. So for all of our listeners, keep, keep crushing, crushing it. it. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Listen, we love connecting with our listeners, so if you have any questions or topic requests, please email them to podcast at thefitnesslounge.net. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Fitness Lounge Podcast for more updates, tips, and content. You can also follow us on Twitter at, at fitnesslounge3. We are excited to take this wonderful journey with you, and we'll see you next time here at the Fitness Lounge.